Arguably, one of the most commonly discussed natural sign in the end days is the dramatic increase of earthquakes around the world, something that in geological time would be statistically unprecedented if it were actually happening during what many believe is the last generation. That in the last days there'd be an in increase in great earthquakes. Jesus used verbiage that means bigger earthquakes in unusual places. We're looking at things regarding, for example, greater hurricanes, greater typhoons, um, things that in nature you can sense that things are coming undone. And yet, if you looked at it naturally, you would say, well, this is due to global warming or this is due to, to man's bad stewardship of the earth. But yet the Bible said as we approached the end, this is exactly what we would see, which, by the way, that preempts man's involvement. The scriptures do tell us that earthquakes, specifically earthquakes, will increase in frequency and in intensity. But wait a minute. Hasn't the U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, gone on record to state that this is not occurring, that no such increase in earthquakes have been detected around the world? Because this is such a debated topic, the USGS gave a press release saying that this was not occurring. As a result, we actually decided to take the USGS data, millions of data points, spent months downloading it, analyzing it, graphing it, studying it, the results were absolutely terrifying. Despite what you may have heard in the past, this is the compiled data from the USGS from over the last 100 years. Keep in mind that we're not talking about the millions of micro tremors that can now be detected from the distribution of more numerous and sensitive sensors, but strictly data from the larger earthquakes that can be felt by people beginning at 6.3 and up on the Richter scale that could be easily detected by early 19th century sensors from virtually anywhere in the world. This data shows what the USGS and other organizations do not want you to see. It shows that the earthquakes are increasing in intensity and they are increasing in frequency. This is exactly the description that was prophesied. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The age of wearable technology. Amazing things happen when we merge technology with our bodies. In our pursuit of progress, if we undermine the morals that define us, what good is our beloved progress then? Neural control. This is happening. The only question that remains is how far will we allow it to go? In one of their collisions, when they collided these particles together, they saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see. There's going to come an Armageddon. There's coming an apocalypse. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. I hope you are. I hope you're ready to meet the Lord. Here's what I worry about coming out of that place, is all this spirit deception using it to deceive people. They connect spirituality and science together. They've got what they want when that happens. Father, in Jesus' name, there may be somebody sitting in this house this morning that's awake now, they've wakened up, they're alarmed, and they're worried. We'll do something about it. In Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake.
days begin with light. Light, you see, is everywhere. Light is life. Light connects us with others, near and far. It entertains and inspires both young and old. Light enables us to see things never imagined. It will drive economies of the future. With light, we can diagnose and treat disease. It helps protect and secure our communities. Light will be key in discovering solutions to society's most pressing problems. And as the lights go down around the world and our days end. And as the lights go down around the world and our days end. And as the lights go down around the world and our days end. Our future will continue to be enabled by light. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet. And I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth. And he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit. And from the shaft rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth. And they were given power, like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I was in prayer during the night and I got, um, I got the vision of this Abaddon and it was horrific. Then in the morning, uh, later on uh, that morning, I got the um, actual prophecy. I, I was hearing it, parts of it for a few days. Prepare for the day of Abaddon. He shall rise from beneath the earth, smoke shall ascend to the heavens. He shall be accompanied by his army of demons. He will have power to cause much pain and suffering, but not the power of death. He shall make men flee in horror, and they will not escape this torment and pain. The army and its king of the locusts shall remain among the unrepentant for five months. Turn from your evil ways, you men of the earth. I am a just God and a forgiving God. Return to me and escape the wrath to come. All those that seek me with a repentant heart will enter in. Come as time moves quickly and the days grow short. Uh, about something is really good topic you had today concerning this, uh, the, the urgency that we're in and concerning CERN not so much for the machinery, but the intent. And um, this probably won't be long enough to say it, but there is a film uh, called Symmetry. To give you an idea of this film, it was made for, specifically for CERN. It's also a message. Here's one of the captions in the film that people will find in the film as it's released. It will ultimately ask if one loves the 
particle more than himself. And then they ask, would you become one with the particle? Really? Yeah. And so, I, 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 uh, of course, it would take a little more time to. Uh, well, but that's one of the ca captains in the film. Go ahead. The name of the film you say is Symmetry. Is that with a C? Symmetry. S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-Y. They allowed this to be filmed inside of CERN. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not just, it's not just an ordinary film. It, it's more of an intention. The scientists were very uh, collaborative in this film. And they did uh, work and help produce this film. And it was, it, it has an intent. It has an announcement. If a, if a person, and it's not conspiracy theory, this is how science seems to edify itself. But um, they have an intent here, it's something very real, something, uh, yes. And now they're releasing that at the same time the CERN is being fired up. Yeah, it's in that neighborhood. CERN itself, everybody knows about CERN, it's a particle accelerator. And they've already found the Higgs boson particle, which is accompanied which in, within that field, which is a field that is the other realm we can't see. That's, in fact, evidence that that realm exists. What they're looking for now is what powers all the fields, which is dark matter. It is the, they call it the God particle. Now, Pastor, it is, it is my opinion, uh, my professional opinion, that they are going to discover this particle. And there's nothing that will prohibit them from doing so. CERN is actually in its startup phases at the moment um, because they'll be doing checks and rechecks. Um, there are some byproducts of CERN, of course, that uh, people will likely experience. That's not conspiracy again. That's a fact. And um, what do you mean by byproducts? Well, are you talking about uh, demons, the demonic entities, and, and perhaps there's a little more. Or are you talking about pressure on you know, the brick? If it were just demons, if it were just demons, right? Um, because we've been given power over them, that would be one thing. But one of the problems with CERN is that it directly affects the psyche of everybody. Uh, you were talking about ISIS and the holes in the Arctic. When CERN started up, uh, when they did one of the experiments in 2012, that's also the time that al-Baghdadi moved and shifted from being one entity to another in Syria. Beheadings were taking place, massive beheadings that they didn't tell the public began spontaneously at that same date. And then when the holes were discovered in 2013 and 14, well, that's when ISIS, as soon as they broke open, ISIS really went full throttle. It did, in fact, unleash something in the world. The effects that CERN has on the brain are measurable. They're measurable effects. That's why it's underground so far. Are you aware that you have awakened a lot of people to the dangers of the CERN LHC and how does this feel? Uh, it's nothing to feel comfortable about. Uh, dangers are never something that you feel good when you dissipate them. Now here's one of the things about this. This antimatter is also called dark matter. And dark matter <coughs> has energy attached to it. And the energy affects people. It affects them. And remember, when you produce antimatter, you gotta contain it. Because if you don't contain it, you gotta contain it. That's the biggest problem, containing it. Because if you don't contain it, it just goes wild. But they do know this, from what they've experienced so far, it has an effect on people. Dark matter has an effect on people. It causes some people to go screaming mad. It controls people. It is an enormously powerful thing. It's pulling something out of hell that you don't want any part to do with and turning it loose. You have to remember our world is made up of matter. The antimatter is what we can't see. 
what we can't touch, what we can't feel, so we interact with it every day. A lot of people like to think of antimatter as the other dimension, which is the opposite of this dimension. It's an inconceivable place that is hostile inherently. It's not under control, it's very hostile. So there's a physical effect to the spiritual world in antimatter. And often, demonic entities and all these other paranormal things are attracted to antimatter. For every gram of antimatter that's produced, and then it's bought into this world when they produce it, it attracts things from another dimension coming here. What is CERN going to do? It will allow humanity to produce pounds of antimatter. What's happening, that is the unseen portion of dark matter. And of course you have the angels which govern what that realm can and cannot do. Because everything is balanced, the uh, subject of Lucifer in the spiritual sense, because God gives everything balance. Everything has balance. There is dark, there is light, there is good, there is bad. Everything has balance. CERN has yielded so many results and gave a true definition of paranormal activity. It's just, it's beyond me that a lot of people cannot get this through the truth of the word. They, they can't. Antimatter is being pulled out of nowhere, out of this other dimension, which is nowhere but everywhere. In consequence to that, they found out antimatter has a specific type of energy signature that they can, in fact, detect. This is how they, uh, it's part of the process of pulling it out. Well, as it comes to find out, some of the not so good consequences of this process has to do with the human psyche. With all the experiments they found, they have found out why paranormal activity exists. With CERN, as they begin to collide these protons, dark matter is going to be produced in great numbers. I mean, in greater and greater numbers. Not only the matter, but the energy signature is going to also be released into this realm. You know what that's going to cause? It's going to cause the dark energy signature within people to begin to activate more and more. You see, it's going to become difficult for people to stay contained or controlled. In essence, they're going to become violent. They're going to become, they're going to have vivid dreams. The darkness within a person is absolutely going to begin to surface. And it's, this is not uh, theoretical. This is not uh, uh, some theory somebody thought of. This is absolutely 100% quantifiable, and it's happened before. It's going to happen in greater numbers this time. It's going to, it will take effect. But I did it. I actually did it, Doctor. See, viewing was only the beginning. But like a rudimentary computer, it only took time and development before a new model was born. You harness a wormhole, speed up one end, and slow down the other end. Go on, go on. I can't. Mr. Darnell, you realize... Please, please, I can't. Let's leave it at this. How does it work? How does it work? You have to understand, if I answer that question, it could rip a hole through everything as we know it. But that's why you're here, isn't it? To change the past, so you're gonna have to give me something. Dr. Pine, I was under the impression it was never a good idea to force a patient to divulge anything they weren't comfortable with. I can't, I, I can't keep doing this. All right, all right. I know this must be frustrating. I can't give you everything. It just wouldn't be safe. I'm listening. You say you like science? I do. To go back and read the concepts presented by Hawking, Einstein, Lewis, light speed, black holes, wormholes. They were so close. There was just one small piece missing. I'm sure you're aware or somewhat familiar with the concept of wormholes. Sure, yeah, they're fascinating to wonder about. If you don't mind, could you tell me what you know? 
um, they're a consequence of Einstein's theory of general relativity. A wormhole in theory would act as a shortcut or a passageway through space and time. The physics are even simpler than your definition. A wormhole creates a tunnel, effectively cutting through two locations in space-time. Yeah, yeah, therefore eliminating the need for three-dimensional travel through space. No more rocket ships. I like Stargate, too. Oh, wow, Stargate. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. Who is that guy in it? Uh, he was really good in that old western. Uh, Kurt Russell? Kurt Russell, he was good, wasn't he? Listen, nothing you were telling me is new information, right? The theories about wormholes have existed for a long time, but nobody knows if they actually exist or how to find them. But I do. They're everywhere. It's just a matter of seeing them or harnessing them. But you haven't explained either. How do you see them? How do you harness them? A machine, some sort of gateway? Of course you need a machine to sustain a wormhole. But this is where I stop. I have given you the gun. Let me keep the bullets. <laughs> Please continue. I found a way to go back. I was alone, but I found it. My old partner was the only one that knew, but for now, it'll stay that way. The only question is, can the ripples I create be enough to change the future? Or create an alternate one? Ripples? Think of the water in that glass as time. Time moves forward constantly, untouched, it's as still as the water. Go back and try to change something, and it creates a ripple effect. Change has to catch up with time. And everything around it either changes or suffers. If you've ever been exposed to soap operas, the music in the soundtrack should evoke memories of a long-running show. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. That's the kind of subtlety being leveraged by the filmmaker. Darnell, the time traveler and inventor of time travel who destroyed the future, says, Think of the water in that glass as time. Time moves forward constantly. Untouched, it's as still as the water. Go back and try to change something. Bang. And it creates a ripple effect. Read between the lines. The particle collision pictured creates a ripple effect in time, a time impact event. Who is trying to go back or forward to try to change an outcome? Darnell is. That's why he's there meeting with Dr. Pyatt and speaking so persuasively. Darnell himself is playing the role of the destroyer of worlds, the dancing Lord Shiva. Under the lamp, we see an idol of Shiva doing the cosmic dance of destruction a miniature of the one featured at the CERN facility. There's a horned mask on the wall that represents the horned god Cernunos, the god of the abyss, who is continually being invoked in ceremonies where magic circles are cast with salt, just like in the symmetry film. Yes, Cernunos, C-E-R-N-U-N-N-O-S. Also, Nodens, Abaddon, Apollyon the Destroyer. It's a clever set. The table lamp paints light on the wall in the shape of an hourglass, hinting of a measure of the sands of time. Under the lamp, you'll find a pitcher of water, a reservoir as drawn from the river of time. Mr. Darnell's pocket watch rests on the coffee table with his time water glass, with the hinged case being a model of folded time space. The box of tissues on the table is a cube. Think of the cube in the Marvel Comic Universe, which has to do with a multi-dimensional binding and the control of vast time-space energies. Again, what kind of machine are they talking about in the clip? Did you see the picture on the wall that artfully illustrates the particle collisions? Darnell mentioned small pieces, like subatomic particles. He mentioned a gun and bullets 
and the collider fires protons like bullets from a machine gun. Did you notice the picture of the full moon next to the one of the particle collisions? That's a celestial timekeeper, the one that rules the night according to the foundational cosmological text of Genesis chapter 1. It's appointed for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and to give light on the earth, which is a matter of the revelation of supernatural insight and the Hebrew Moedim, the prophetic schedule of holy days. The moon silently affects the tides of the seas on earth in endless cycles. With that influence due to the interaction of gravity relative to mass, and with the water and the sea as a metaphor for time, that's a potent symbol in the context of the particle collider, with its vast array of enormously powerful ring magnets arrayed in a giant ring. Sonic energy is also used to accelerate the particles, so the LHC literally sings as the particles dance. Symmetry's opera and dance. When Darnell bangs the coffee table and we see the imagery of the particle beam collision so clearly illustrated, is there any doubt about what time machine they're talking about? With all the clues, do they really need to say it? Need more evidence? Darnell doesn't actually hit the coffee table with his fist, not directly. He hits a book that sits on the table, which is wrapped around with two rubber bands, one red and one green. The red band represents a stream of particles traveling around the LHC, and the green band is the opposing stream. The crossing of the bands represents the crossing of the streams where the collisions occur. He strikes the rubber bands at their crossing. Bang! What's in Darnell's little black book? Notes on particle physics, time-space manipulation, and time travel? Are the bands made of rubber because time is flexible and in flux, able to contract and expand? Is there a red shift of the beams relative to one another, where he's slowing down one and speeding up the other, which Darnell had already claimed was a general principle involved with harnessing a wormhole? There's another aspect of the rubber band bound book that should be mentioned. The two men are actually the same man who traveled back in time on a mission to convince himself not to make the mistake of building the device that would destroy the world in 50 years' time. The rubber bands represent the life of the man, where there are two at once at the crossing of the future with the past in the present. Stephen Hawking, he called the God particle could destroy the universe. He keeps warning. You see, it's going to become difficult for people to stay contained or controlled. In the book of the Revelation of John, it does speak about a messenger from the upper levels coming down to earth and opening up a doorway to the bottomless pit down inside the earth to let things out. So maybe this is research being done to develop the technology we need here to do such a thing. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a, a you know, wild guess. Right. And it's interesting, I think, that you know, it seemed like, even in the Old Testament, Whenever there are mentions of high places and things like that, it required, at least for the fallen entities, uh, required some sort of sacrifice or some sort of uh, ritual for these uh, fallen entities to come through. It seems like God's angels are freely able to, uh, you know, traverse right. as they will, but the fallen entities require some sort of key, if you will, you know, to for us to allow them in, so to speak. So perhaps this is just a, you know, a large human project to create the biggest uh, doorways to the fallen entities to come through. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think we're, we're going to see some rather astounding events in the next uh, 12 to 24 months um, because other factors in biblical prophecy seem to be coming to play uh, later this year. And that would then require the presence of this uh, fake alien landing invasion or whatever. Uh, but to do that, um, 
there are going to have to be a lot of them appear and I'm wondering if God himself isn't going to open up one of these portals to, to cast Satan and his minions out of his universe down into ours for the final battle uh, at that time of course these beings will appear all over the place and I, and I think technology for them to fly around saucers and that kind of stuff have been developed already since 1952 or so when we started sharing bases underground bases with these fallen ones uh, quote unquote grace and aliens but um, I think this has been prepared for the time when the gateway opens and these beings are pushed out of their level to ours how could that play out I mean it seems to me that the Obama or whoever you know Hillary or whoever this president's going to be announcing uh, alien presence is not going to be enough to really convince the whole world it seems like there has to be more of a, a manifestation in my opinion but what, what are your thoughts on how that might look yeah yeah I'm sure that this will happen um, the I think the release of, of their presence will be such that the, the people of the earth will say ah they're here and the governments were lying in essence it won't be uh, trusting a government release of the thing it will be so obvious They'll be in the skies, you know, like in the movie V or, or in the 4th of July, you know, um, the the beings and their craft, big ones, will be over major cities or locations that will be on TV worldwide and people will go, oh, they're here, you know, are they friendly? Now, I think that this will have to come at the height of a global threat so real that people will say to anyone help us avoid this or we're going to be extinct you know the human race listen it's not just one experiment they're about to perform this thing is going to run six months continuously colliding protons near the speed of light to analyze particles exotic particles that are made that are made at the beginning of the big bang that's why they call it the big bang machine is the only way to observe these particles which wink in and out of existence in i mean a fraction of of time they found the force that holds the dark energy or the dark matter away from this realm. They call it the wall. There's another name for that. A name of which that, that those particles they're going to find, they found part of it. They're going to find the other pieces that are in that wall. And when they find the other pieces to this wall, they will then be able to undo that wall. There's another name for that wall, the veil. Call it the veil. It holds back that realm. They found out what's holding back the dark energy from, because it would be absolutely destructive if the two met. But they found out, now with this as a weapon, there is no counter weapon to this. If we need some outside universal threat, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat. So, of course, this all has to do with CERN, and uh, even on CERN's logo, as many have exposed as well, you've got the 666 spinning. We see CERN being used by even heavy metal bands like Megadeth, you've got Super Collider there. And this is CERN being shown on the, shown on the album cover. And as I said, it's to do with the transfiguration of the planet, it's the false Jesus Sananda uh, coming off the leeching off the back of Christ. Because, you know, as you know, some of you may know, Christ, the, the transfiguration was to do with Christ, and he formed a bridge to the Father in the Bible. And this is obviously the inversion of that. It's the transfiguration of their kingdom. It's the birthing of hell on earth. It's the bridge from hell to earth, from the abyss to earth, to break loose uh, the ones that are imprisoned, the spirits, the fallen. As the Bible all describes there's another name for that wall the veil they know that they could be opening or parting the veil it was on the day of atonement that moses came down from mount sinai for the second time and he put a veil over his face moses was there with the lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant the ten commandments when moses came down from mount sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, 
and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. And are not like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face, so that the sons of Israel would not look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds were hardened, for until this very day at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted, because it is removed in Christ. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The veil was first put on right on the Day of Atonement. I believe this will also be the day that the veil is removed. The word veil means to cover or conceal. The word unveil means to reveal. In a wedding, the veil of the bride is removed. We are the bride of Christ, and our veil will be completely removed on the day when we see him face to face. 1 Corinthians 13.12 says, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. The Day of Atonement is known as the Face to Face Day because only on this day was the High Priest allowed to go into the Holy Holies and live to tell about it. On no other day of the year was anyone allowed to ever enter the Holy of Holies. The high priest would remove the veil and enter into the Holy of Holies. When Christ died as our atonement, the veil was ripped in two, and we can now boldly enter the throne of grace to find mercy in our time of need. The day of atonement is the day of the unveiling, or the day of revealing. Colossians 3, 4 says, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Isaiah 26, 21 says, And the earth will give birth to the departed spirits. Come, my people, enter into your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide for a little while until indignation runs its course. For behold, the Lord is about to come out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will reveal her bloodshed, and will no longer cover her slain. So this large Hadron Collider was started up. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. I cannot and will not attempt to speak as a physicist. It would make me look like a fool. My purpose is to try to be a liaison between them and you is to try to take what's going on in that collider and break it down to where I can understand it and I can give it out so you can understand it to where it makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from what's called a theoretical physicist. This man, his name is Stephen Hawking. He's well known throughout the world. Anyone that has anything to do with nuclear energy or has anything to do with physics knows this man. And he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein and uh, of that level. And so I want to read to you what this man has to say about what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland. Listen carefully. These are the words of Stephen Hawking. <laughs> He recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's Large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist, and he says there is no God. 
Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. Lucifer lives in the antimatter. He lives in a different frequency or a different dimension, a spiritual world, a spiritual realm. But he comes in to contact us. He will try to manipulate you. He will try to tempt you by manipulating your brain. This is why the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. And Apostle Paul says, the helmet of salvation. Another scripture, he says, put on the mind of Christ. Another scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Dr. Lester Summer wants to teach us all the time that the mind is the battleground for the soul. So it's the manipulation. And so what they're doing at CERN is the manipulating the darkness, the dark matter. And they're doing it by the collisions of protons. It's more than just a potential massive earth changing universe changing explosion but it's a manipulation of the frequencies on which humans on earth are living imagine if you could take everybody under and, and manipulate the frequencies that we all are operating in into a different dimension or frequency imagine if the whole world could be dropped into this hole, into this change of, of um, reality, if you will, or dimensions. And that's what they're trying to do with the RFID microchip, folks. And now I'm not a scientist, but the radio frequency identification device is to not just, it's not just to link you to a computer, it's to manipulate your DNA or your mind to bring you a couple frequencies down to where you can be manipulated. The only thing that it won't manipulate, get this folks, this is great, is it can't go through the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I'm not joking you. I mean, there's prophecy teams that work for the federal government and they know this, that they can't manipulate the mind of Christians because they can't get through the blood of Jesus. Folks, Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time. We're in the last days. The spirit of the Antichrist. Why do you think these little towers are everywhere? Radio frequency towers. They're not even being used for anything right now. But they're putting them everywhere. They're not cell phone towers. They're the towers that will be used to help change the frequencies, to try to control the masses but they can't control us that are saved. looking for how God holds everything together. That's why they call it the God particle. They're trying to find Jesus, but they don't want to find Jesus. So they're trying to find what it, what is it that holds all matter together. However, they also 
believe that there are parallel realities around us, other dimensions, and there could be other intelligence there. Another thing we Christians already know, right? Why not just come and ask us? You don't need to build a collider. However, there's a reason God put them on the other side of that veil, and you might not want to open the door. And here's the thing. Their own, their own director of CERN has gave uh, uh, interviews to the British press in which he admits that's what they're trying to do. They want to open a door to another dimension. And he said, when we open this door, he said, something might come through it. Actually, they built, uh, the, the, they have the, the God, the Hindu God of destruction that destroys at the molecular level is right out in front of the offices of CERN and it's that's, dedicated it's like the to Shiva. I'm going to put it on the screen, you'll show it. Because so I've crazy. seen it and I said, this is a false god. What in the... I didn't... I, I couldn't find anything about it because I, I need to get some books and read a little right. more. It's named after Apollyakon, the gateway to the god Apollo. But what does the book of Revelation say? That an angel comes down with a key to the bottomless pit and opens that gateway. And guess who is the god down in there? The king over the bottomless pit. Apollyon. Abaddon. The king of the bottomless pit, and we're trying right there to open Boy, a gateway. Work, when we were talking back there, I said, you know, it sounds to me like you're describing they're trying to open the door, to, to the gate to hell. Right. Okay. Well, here's here's the thought. Uh, God literally sealed and locked demons into the earth that would not be released until the last days. And now we have evidence that man is the one that's trying to open the door and release them. We have the power to overcome our own flesh because the darkness in this world is about to be pulled out of everything. Everything with darkness in it. That darkness is about to surface in a way that no one ever forecasted or thought possible. But it's absolutely going to take place. And the only way a person can overcome this is through the true power of the Holy Spirit. And to stay within the blood of the Lamb, there is no hypocrisy in purity. There is no hatred in purity. There is no accusation in purity. And people need to be in that purity and truth, not acting like they're in the purity. They have to be there. It has to be in their hearts. And they have to do everything they can do right now so they can be strong enough to endure. None of us knows when we're absolutely going, but I, I for one, intend to finish this race, and I'm trying to sound an alarm that something very different is going to be uh, all too evident to everybody who believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And without Him in truth, they're not going to make it. They will not make it. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. One of the tragedies of Nepal's earthquake is that many of the country's most treasured cultural monuments were destroyed in the blink of an eye. I'm standing in what was the Fashi Dega temple. It was dedicated to Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, and now there's very little of it left. Prepare for the day of Abaddon. He shall rise from beneath the earth, smoke shall ascend to the heavens. He shall be accompanied by his army of demons. He will have power to cause much pain and suffering, but not the power of death. He shall make men flee in horror, and they will not escape this torment and pain. The army and its king of the locusts shall remain among the unrepentant for five months. Turn from your evil ways, you men of the earth. I am a just God and a forgiving God. Return to me and escape the wrath to come. All those that seek me with a repentant heart will enter in. 
come as time moves quickly and the days grow short. There's going to come an Armageddon. There's coming an apocalypse. I hope you're ready. I hope you are. I hope you're ready to meet the Lord. It could change physics forever. The revamped Large Hadron Collider LHC is due to be restarted after a two-year hiatus. Described in some reports as a monstrous underground atom smasher, the LHC is the world's most powerful particle collider, and it's already revolutionized physics with the discovery of the Higgs boson. Higgs boson's ability to give mass to most elementary particles has earned it the nickname the God Particle. The LHC is expected to run faster than ever and is predicted to reach its highest collision energy by June. It's on course to smash all records and solve some of the biggest mysteries in physics. After years in the repair shop, the world's most complex machine is coming out of hibernation. Scientists are hitting the restart button on the Large Hadron Collider. Straddling the French-Swiss border, what's been called the Big Bang Machine consists of a 17-mile underground ring. There, subatomic particles travel at almost the speed of light and are smashed together, allowing scientists to sift through the aftermath in an attempt to answer unsolved questions about things like dark matter, supersymmetry, and extra dimensions. The LHC is a science experiment that took decades to come together. The LHC was finally up and running in 2008. For the first time, a beam of protons steered around the collider, but it wasn't a smooth start. Nine days later, an electrical problem damaged the machine. About one year and $40 million in repairs later, the machine was back online and the payoff was colossal. In 2012, CERN announced the discovery of the elusive Higgs boson, the so-called God particle, thought to explain how other particles get their mass. But the following year, the $10 billion proton collider was taken offline for refurbishing. Now, it's being fired up again. This run is due to go through 2017. With the upgrades, particles can collide together at even higher energies, giving scientists another chance to unlock the mysteries of our universe. The Large Hadron Collider is being fired up this week after a two-year hiatus, and a group of scientists believes that the results could prove the existence of parallel universes. Scientists believe that a second run of the LHC could produce or detect miniature black holes, which they argue could point to entire universes hidden away in higher dimensions folded into our reality. Now the LHC will be powered to its highest ever energy levels, about double those of its last run. And if these scientists are right, the new run could uncover black holes tucked away in dimensions beyond the four that we interact with in our daily lives. So the book of Revelation opens up the future for us. So in Revelation chapter number 9 and verse 1, the scripture says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die. 
and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared to battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. They had hair as the hair of a woman, and were teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tail. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Woe, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now what I'm going to preach you this morning may be one of the most important messages that I've ever preached in all the years that I've been preaching the Word of God. But what I have studied has alarmed me greatly to the point to where I need to get this material out to you that are listening. I originally had planned to preach this tonight, but the Holy Spirit changed my mind and said, preach it in the morning. So this morning I'm going to preach you a message about something that is happening right now. It's in CERN, Switzerland. Now you may not be aware of what's going on over there, but there's a thing over there that's called a Large Hadron Collider. And it is an accelerator. It accelerates particles and then brings them to the point of collision. So this Large Hadron Collider was started up just a few days ago, and it's still in the initial process of being brought online completely. You say, what in the world does something like that have to do with me and the Bible? It has a lot to do with you and the Bible. It makes an application to your life and to this world as we know it today. For what is happening in that collider is an astounding thing. So I want to read something to you this morning from a theoretical physicist, Stephen Hawking. And he is one that some rate even on the level of Einstein. Listen carefully. These are the words of Stephen Hawking. He recently warned the reactivation in March of CERN's Large Hadron Collider could pose grave dangers to our planet. The ultimate reality, check, we are warned. Hawking has come straight out and said the God particle, and this is what you've heard referred to time and again as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. Now let that settle in. This man is an atheist, and he says there is no God. Yet he says that what's happening right now in CERN, Switzerland, and I'll give you what they're trying to do in a moment, what's happening at this very minute in CERN, Switzerland, has the potential to destroy the universe. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has also sounded the alarm by telling anyone who might want to blow up a planet how to do so is this CERN's attempt to do so by attempting to recreate the Big Bang within a man-made structure. This has frightened Stephen Hawking so much. Do they know that they know that they know what they are doing? Ask yourself, how much energy is keeping it together? Then you put more than that amount of energy into the object, it will explode. I've quoted two physicists. These are scientists. These men do not agree with what's happening in CERN, Switzerland right now. There is a 17 mile long accelerator that lies 300 feet beneath the surface of the ground. This area is where France and Switzerland come together. So part of this accelerator is located in France and part of it in Switzerland. It is a joint European project. The United States of America is there as an observer, but the, but the brain power that's going in to this experimentation originates in Europe. They are attempting to recreate what they believe happened that brought all of this into existence as being the Big Bang. Now you and I know from the book of Genesis chapter number one that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He spoke it into existence. They are finding things, and this is what's important for us to understand today. 
They are discovering things that they did not expect to discover as they get deeper and deeper into this, uh, into this experimentation. They are beginning to find out that there is a whole lot more to the creation than they had ever given thought to before. They're beginning to find out that there's something going on here that boggles the human mind, that literally blows us apart when we try to even comprehend what's happening. This 17 mile long underground tube that is uh, located there in Switzerland has I think four or five different points where they collide particles that are being moved at or above the speed of light inside this collider. They're looking for the very building blocks of what brought all of this together. To give you an analogy, let's say you have a house. You observe that house, it's beautiful. You think, my goodness, let's see how this is put together. And so you start taking the house apart and you expect to find nails, but instead you find glue. That fascinates you that much more because you find glue holding this house together. You wonder to yourself, what was this glue like before its hardened state? Because you see, once the glue glues the things together, it hardens, solidifies. They want to know what the glue was like in its liquid state. So they're going through this to go back to that point to where they can separate and find out what this was like then. And by doing that, of course, they can build on the information and knowledge that they attain. Now what's going to follow in the message this morning is the implications of what's going on. But let me give you just a little bit of what has been happening. Where they have done this experimentation, strange things are happening, unexpected by the scientist. Paranormal phenomena, they like to call it. Apparitions, ghosts, all kinds of demonic spirits are beginning to manifest themselves in ways. Here we have in CERN, Switzerland, a huge wheel. Inside that wheel is a Hindu God and his name is Shiva. He does a dance of destruction inside that wheel. And his purpose is he is one of the triad gods, one of the greatest gods of Hinduism. Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma. Brahma is the God of creation. Vishnu is the God of preservation, but Shiva is the God of destruction. The way the Hindu sees it is that when Shiva destroys, it's not for the purpose of annihilation. He destroys so that Brahma can come and recreate. So now when the Hindu, since they're scientists to CERN, they put this out there in front. And so what these people are doing with the collider is destroying what comes together, but for the purpose of recreating and find out what brought it into existence to begin with. Are you following me? Yeah. Now here we have men that are scientists on an average of an IQ of anywhere from 160 to 200 or even above. These are some of the smartest brains in all the world. No, that's no question about it whatsoever. But we were told when Darwin's theory of evolution came out and became vogue, that it would destroy the foundations of Christianity. And this old book that we hold in our hands, this old outdated Bible would no longer be relevant. And a lot of people bought into it because after all, Darwin is scientific. But it's an amazing thing now that 150 years later, we have some of the greatest scientists in the world that are becoming very religious because here they've got Shiva, they've got dances to Shiva,
And they are definitely being connected with Shiva as they're finding things. Let me give you one example. In one of their collisions, when they collided these particles together, they saw things. They were apparitions. They didn't expect to see. They didn't fit in any model. They didn't fit anywhere. They don't belong. But they, they could not deny the reality of it. Something was going on inside there that they could not explain. And it was scary for them. For the scientist has his paper and his pencil and his books. And if it doesn't fit in his paper and his pencil and his books, it's out the window. They don't understand. They have a hard time accepting the fact that there is a spirit world out there. That spirit world was created by a spirit being. An almighty, eternal, absolute being that is from everlasting to everlasting who put in me what I am today by the power of Almighty God and by the power of the new birth. But a scientist like that will never admit that because that takes it out of his control and his power. Stephen Hawking has warned these people, you are about to open Pandora's box. And once you open Pandora's box, you cannot put back in what came out of that box. The Bible said, he that letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Second Thessalonians chapter number two. God Almighty is going to let them go so far, but he's not going to go any further. Demons, all this other stuff, probably couldn't care less whether you've got matter or antimatter. It's a spirit being, but to fit into the great deception that's coming and it's coming and it's about here right now. I mean a deception like this world has never known before. To fit into this great deception, they can sure draw these men in to make them think that because they have reached this certain point in their scientific analysis that they're bringing in these spirit beings. It'll make true believers out of them. NASA said just a few days ago, NASA, they said just a few days ago that by the year 2020 that we will definitely come in contact with aliens, beings from another planet. Now we're talking about scientists. We're talking about Darwin's crowd. We're talking about the crowd that threw the Bible out and said it's old, archaic, anachronistic. It doesn't belong today. We're talking about that bunch. We're too smart for the Bible. We're scientists. Yet this crowd is saying that in just a few years that they're going to know, that they know that they're going to come in contact with alien beings. I thought to myself, my, 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 my. Do you boys have, are you already, have you always known that? That you've got a certain date set? And what you think is an alien being is really a demon? There are no aliens out there, folks. Forget that stuff, okay? There's nothing out there. You get into the third heaven, you get into the abode of God. There's nothing up there. All these UFOs, spacecraft, flying saucers, all this stuff, that's all demonic. It's real, but it's demonic. I see a great deception beginning to develop. 
that in their analysis and in their laboratories that they believe in, that they've got their heart and soul tied up in, little things begin to show up, stuff that they can't explain, that sucks them in to begin to understand, well, maybe this is, a, this is being affected, it's being acted upon by something that we don't understand completely. And this spirit being that comes from out there, that comes down to this world, they accept with open arms because they're willing to put Shiva out there dancing around in the cosmos and destroying and then bringing a new creation in. Here are these wise, smart, brilliant men. And they're willing to believe that there's something more than what can be measured in a microscope and can be put in a petri dish. That there's something going on and you better believe there is. Now in the spirit world that I just preached to you about, you can see that. Now what about the physical world? Let's go back to Hawking for a minute. He said, remember he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in spirits. He's a dialectical materialist. He believes that what they're liable to do here in CERN, Switzerland is unleash the gates of hell on this earth. The reason I took you to Revelation is because in the ninth chapter of Revelation, what you just read is the gate of hell. Yeah. Revelation chapter number four is the door to heaven. When he catches up his saints to meet him in the clouds, we're going through the door into heaven. But he will open the gate of hell on this earth. And according to Revelation chapter number nine, these beings are coming up out of the earth. If you remember when Saul went to the witch of Endor, she said, I saw old oh men, I saw spirit coming up out of the earth, coming up. What she see? She saw demons. Until God brought Samuel back himself personally, the real Samuel, who appeared before Saul and the witch of Endor. How, what would be a greater ruse than to use their science and their technology to suck them in? to accepting some spirit being coming from somewhere up here, some alien, down to this earth and do it through a collider over here. This is as high a technology I suppose you got on this earth. And do it through that and bring it down upon this earth and bring it into people. If somebody arrived on earth from another planet and they asked you, what on earth are you doing at CERN? In a sentence, how would you explain it? Um, in a sentence, I would say what we're trying to do is understand the universe around us as well as we possibly can. Is that the way you would characterize what's happening at CERN? Um, and that's the hope, of course. And every scientist is like a child that is playing on the throne, as you know. And uh, that's, that's what everybody on the planet is hoping for. So the intention is marvelous, um, only uh, uh, this physics, which no one knows yet in, in this realm, uh, also contains dangers. And I'm a little concerned about the dangers that are not yet, how should I say, uh, addressed so far. It is a wonderful hope connected to CERN. And there is a danger involved, and the danger has not been disproved. Delivery. seems not normal. Honey, I think I might have opened a 
dimensional vortex. Just don't throw anything into it. me with your little wizard stick it's called a staff okay so here's the deal there's this real bad dude wears a helmet he's been tearing rifts between all the lego worlds wow i only understood about half of that but it sounds pretty bad and he's got our friends so we must return to our quest to save them Guess we're on wizard time. I do believe it is now my turn to operate this vehicle. Well, nice meeting you, whatever your name is. I still don't entirely trust you. Many thanks for your assistance, goodly giant. No problem. Good luck. six years and millions of dollars and you gave us nothing what's different now reed richards he knows answers to questions we don't even know to ask you this is our chance to learn more about our planet and maybe even save it what you've created here is incredible they just cracked interdimensional travel you open the door you don't know how to close you don't know anything about what's coming. What is coming? Doom. With every second that ticks by, the future is running out. What if there was a place, a secret place, where nothing was impossible? Can I see? Stop it! Go away! Did you see the dog? I want you to take me there. Take you where? Where'd you get this? Who are you, kid? What you saw was a place where the best and the brightest people in the world came together to actually change it. We've been looking for someone like you for a very long time. Why? Did something happen over there? Something bad? They followed you here? Who? Come on! Get in! There's one way in. They know we're coming, so follow me. All the people, why me? He thinks you can fix the future. You wanted to see Tomorrowland. Here it comes.
we've never met before, right? Follow me. to see tomorrow land here it comes honey i think i might have opened a dimensional vortex know there are not hundreds not millions but billions of other solar systems out there thanks to the Hubble telescope and what we know about black holes in the universe and all of that the, the dimensions of physics are such that I would be quite surprised if in the lifetime of people that are no older than 30 here we don't discover 
some form of life in another universe. So I think there are lots of interesting discoveries, biological, on Earth, and other discoveries in the heavens that those of you who are younger will get to see unfold. You'll have all kind of problems with them, but on balance it'll be a plus. And it'll make life much more interesting. But you have to remember our world is made up of matter. The antimatter is what we can't see, what we can't touch, what we can't feel, so we interact with it every day. A lot of people like to think of antimatter as the other dimension, which is the opposite of this dimension. It's an inconceivable place that is hostile inherently. It's not under control, it's very hostile. So there's a physical effect to the spiritual world and antimatter. And often, demonic entities and all these other paranormal things are attracted to antimatter. For every gram of antimatter that's produced and then it's bought into this world when they produce it. It attracts things from another dimension coming here. What is CERN going to do? It will allow humanity to produce pounds of antimatter. What's happening, that is the unseen portion of dark matter. And of course you have the angels which govern what that realm can and cannot do because everything is balanced to the uh, subject of Lucifer in the spiritual sense because God gives everything balance. Everything has balance. There is dark, there is light, there is good, there is bad. They, everything has balance. CERN has yielded so many results and gave a true definition of paranormal activity. It's just, it's beyond me that a lot of people cannot get this through the truth of the word. They, they can't. Antimatter is being pulled out of nowhere, out of this other dimension, which is nowhere but everywhere. In consequence to that, they found out antimatter has a specific type of energy signature that they can, in fact, detect. This is how they, uh, it's part of the process of pulling it out. Well, as it comes to find out, some of the not so good consequences of this process has to do with the human psyche. With all the experiments they found, they have found out why paranormal activity exists. With CERN, as they begin to collide these protons, dark matter is going to be produced in great numbers, I mean in greater and greater numbers. Not only the matter, but the energy signature is going to also be released into this realm. You know what that's going to cause? It's going to cause the dark energy signature within people to begin to activate more and more. You see, it's going to become difficult for people to stay contained or controlled. In essence, they're going to become violent. They're going to become, they're going to have vivid dreams. The darkness within a person is absolutely going to begin to surface. And it's, this is not uh, theoretical. This is not uh, uh, some theory somebody thought of. This is absolutely 100% quantifiable, and it's happened before. It's going to happen in greater numbers this time. It's going to, it will take effect. Now here's one of the things about this. This, this, this antimatter is also called dark matter. And dark matter has energy attached to it. And the energy affects people. It affects them. And remember, when you produce antimatter, you've got to contain it. Because if you don't contain it, you got to contain it. That's the biggest problem, containing it. Because if you don't contain it, it just goes wild. And they don't know what it's liable to do. Now, folks, go check me out. Go check me out. I, I want you to. Go check me out this afternoon and see what it says about antimatter. And it'll say, yes, you better contain it. Because you don't know what it's liable to do. But they do know this. From what they've experienced so far, it has an effect on people. Dark matter has an effect on people. It causes some people to go screaming mad. It controls people. 
It is, an, it is an enormously powerful thing. It's pulling something out of hell that you don't want any part to do with and turning it loose on mankind. Now, you know, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't ever been in agreement with an atheist before, but I'm in agreement with this one. <laughs> I and Mr. Hawking see it the same way. They better leave that stuff alone. What CERN does, it accelerates particles in that big circle around and around and around and around until they're traveling at just enormous velocity. And then they collide these particles together. And in that moment, it creates a moment that they think is kind of how the Big Bang started the whole universe. That's the whole purpose behind it. However, they also believe that there are parallel realities around us, other dimensions, and there could be other intelligence there. However, there's a reason God put them on the other side of that veil, and you might not want to open the door. And here's the thing. Okay. Their, own, their own director of CERN has gave uh, uh, interviews to the British press in which he admits that's what they're trying to do. They want to open a door to another dimension. And he said, when we open this door, he said, something might come through it into our reality. Or he said, we might send something through it into their reality. You can look that up. It's in the British press. Where the CERN was built, this is St. Genus Poeli. That's the name of the township. But in ancient days, it was called Apollyakam. It was literally a temple to the god Apollo because they believe that's the gateway to the underworld. So in Revelation chapter number 9, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now, let's make sense of it for you right now. This is 2015. The church is dead and asleep. The only, the, only way you, the, the only crowds you have in this country today are the crowds that are pumped up by rock and rap, and it's all about love, self-love and positive attitudes and, you know, money and me, myself, and I. I'm in love with me, I'm, up, I'm in love with myself, and I'm in love with I. You've got the people to the point to where they can be moved emotionally not intellectually, but emotionally. Anything stirs people today. They got crowd mentality. They got mob mentality. Can you imagine something that has created earthquakes, that has made apparitions appear, that you've got scientists warning, don't do this. You don't know what you're gonna unleash. Maybe there's a greater purpose in all of that that they're not even aware of. He's called Satan. Maybe he intends to bring chaos on this earth. Chaos, order out of chaos. The peacemaker shows up. The earth is in a turmoil and it's blazing and burning. And then the peacemaker shows up. How close could we be to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? How close could we be? How close? The church is asleep. But the Lord's coming back. And to hear about something over here that they can produce one gram of it has the potential of four atomic bombs. Boy, if somebody got a hold of that, you talk about blackmailing a whole nation. And did you know what? They say they're weaponizing it now. And they say now that the nations of the world, although they've joined together over there in Europe, with this collider, they've stepped back and thought to themselves, hold on, if this crowd over here gets that, we need that. And there you go. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to tell you this morning what I really believe. I really do believe this. I believe that all the peace and prosperity and, and, and joy, as far as this world's concerned, that you've enjoyed, enjoy it, because I don't think things are going to get any better. I believe they're going to get worse. And I believe you're just beginning to see the, the beginning of it. And I believe that uh, a war is soon to come. There's going to come an Armageddon. There's coming an ap apocalypse. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. I hope you are. I hope you're ready to meet the Lord. I hope you're ready. My biggest fear of this place over here is not them blowing up the world. Although, I, you know, the Lord's going to make the decision about that. Here's what I worry about coming out of that place is all this spirit deception using it to deceive people. They connect spirituality and science together. Imagine.
what kind of a union that would have. Science and spirituality, not Christ, but science and spirituality joined together. Man, they've got what they want when that happens. How many of you know the Lord Jesus this morning? Boy, even so, come Lord Jesus. Now, folks, I've only had three or four days to deal with this. I've gotten some stuff in here that I need to go deeper into and look at a little further because there's some stuff going on here that literally blows my mind. But what I've given out to you this morning is just skimming the surface about what's happening in CERN, Switzerland. Some of you may know a whole lot more about some of this stuff than I do. But if you do, you should be alarmed because of what I've told you, the truth. Folks, this is not hypothetical. If I understand correctly, no more than a handful of matter was used to blow up Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They released the potential in that and blew it up, if I understand it correctly. And that one gram of antimatter is four times more powerful than what blew up Nagasaki and Hiroshima. You don't want that in the hands of the wrong person. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to use what I've said, Lord, for the glory of God. There may be somebody sitting in this house this morning that's awake now. They've wakened up. They're alarmed, and they're worried, and they're thinking, my goodness, if half of what that preacher said is true, that's enough to stir me. I'm going to do something about it. In Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake. So the intention is marvelous. Um, only uh, uh, this physics, which no one knows yet in, in this realm, uh, also contains dangers. And I'm a little concerned about the dangers that are not yet, how should I say, uh, addressed so far. We have the power to overcome our own flesh because the darkness in this world is about to be pulled out of everything. Everything with darkness in it, that darkness is about to surface in a way that no one ever forecasted or thought possible, but it's absolutely going to take place. Are you watching this, guys? Are they watching this? This is one of our darkest days as a city. And the only way a person can overcome this is through the true power of the Holy Spirit. And to stay within the blood of the Lamb, there is no hypocrisy in purity. There is no hatred in purity. There is no accusation in purity. And people need to be in that purity in truth, not acting like they're in the purity. They have to be there. It has to be in their hearts. And they have to do everything they can do right now so they can be strong enough to endure. None of us knows when we're absolutely going, but I, I, for one, intend to finish this race, and I'm trying to sound an alarm that something very different is going to be uh, all too evident to everybody who believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And without Him in truth, they're not going to make it. They will not make it without Him in truth. One of the tragedies of Nepal's earthquake is that many of the country's most treasured cultural monuments were destroyed in the blink of an eye. I'm standing in what was the Fashi Dega temple. It was dedicated to Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, and now there's very little of it left. 